Thank you. Um, my question is for both panelists. Um, there, about a month ago, there was a similar debate, a federal side debate at my school, the George Washington Law School, and one of the panelists uh, put forth that the issue of torture was, uh, the immorality of torture was so painfully obvious and mainstream, I guess you'd say, I guess you'd say that the outrage was not the quality of Mr. Shada's uh, client's work, but the fact that government lawyers were even being commissioned to to write about the, to the topic of torture. So my question is, do you, th do you the panelists think that government lawyers uh, addressing the issue of torture incur somehow legitimizes torture and encourages it, or does it set an outer limitation on the infliction of pain? Does, does it normalize it? No, that's a good question. I, I think, I, I hear the legitimation point, but, but government lawyers can reasonably be called upon to advise on whether conduct runs afoul of legal prohibitions, even if the core of the legal prohibition is something that is such clear immoral. I mean, of course, torture. Come up with whatever core case you can think of of torture. Of course, that's immoral. But that doesn't answer the question that the lawyers actually have to answer here. So I, I, my claim is not that addressing torture is an ethical failing, because the lawyers had to figure out, can we make them stand for eight hours? Can we deprive them of sleep? Can we blast them with uh, Nancy Sinatra songs? Can we? Oh, Nancy um, Pelosi. Oh, yeah, or, there you go. Um, they have no idea who she is. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so, so these specific questions about, you know, what can be done given existing criminal, civil, other prohibitions on doing this, that's a perfectly reasonable question. That doesn't normalize it. I mean, I, I think, you know, the normalizing concern would come up with something like Alan Dershowitz's torture warrants proposal. You know, that kind of thing is what you might worry about. But, but just the very process of advising doesn't risk that legitimation problem. I mean, I, I do think that there is a certain question begging quality to the, to the posing of the question in these, in these uh, types of uh, forms. Because ultimately, um, the only thing that is unlawful torture is what the statute says is unlawful torture. Um, and there may be m many lay uses of the word torture that would strike you as being torturous in some sense, like sitting here and listening to us, um, <laughs> or listening to Nancy whoever songs. <laughs> um, uh, but it doesn't really answer the legal question as opposed to the normative question. And, and to me, the great failing of the debate has been that people reach a conclusion about whether the particular technique or conduct strikes them in the gut in a certain way uh, and never bother to read the statute. Um, and I would love one of these days to hear our Attorney General explain to me, going through the elements of the statute, why he so often says that some of these things are torture. It would be a very interesting uh, explanation. I have never heard it. All right, we are out of time. Thank you all. Let's thank the panel. You have a good support to be here. Thank you. It was fun. It's, it's, it's important to do this. I mean, I